Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Fantasy Romance and Romantic Fantasy. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Oh, all that hits the spot this morning. Oh. I have become aware that I don't do that every single day. So, uh, today is Monday, February 22nd, 2021. Uh, my mom messaged me, texted me good morning, as she does every morning, and she told me it was 2-21-2021. I was like, oh, how cool, and I was all fixing to say something about that today, but then it turns out she was wrong. <laughs> she misled me cruelly. So we missed, or I missed, 2-21-2021, although... Uh, Dorinda and I have been observing all month about the various combination of twos and ones and zeros um, because Dorinda is very much into the lucky number things. So uh, to do earrings before we go too much farther, um, I'm wearing these, I mean they're just these silly little beaded earrings. Um, showing you on the video. They are little stars. Um, it's a six pointed star with a black bead in the middle and three little orangey uh, beads ah, dangling off the bottom. Um, and they seem Halloweeny to me. So I keep them around for Halloweeny type things, although I don't wear them tons. But in honor of that, I am wearing my um, Dia de los Muertos t-shirt uh, that a friend, actually a classmate of David's from Acupuncture College made, um, Nori Wilson. She's got signed. She made this in 95. Um, well, I guess her copyright was 95. She clearly didn't give it to us until much later because we didn't know her until um, 2009, at least. I think that's correct. So, but she gave the shirt to David and he gave it to me uh, because it's not something he would typically wear, but I'd lo I love the shirt. So hi, Nori, wherever you are. She used to be up in Taos. Maybe she's there still. I don't know if she's practicing acupuncture, but really wonderful graphic design, isn't it? Uh, for those who don't know Mexico, it's um, Day of the Dead, uh, Dia de las Muertos. Uh, and I, I love all of the designs. In fact, the sharp eyed among you might discern certain um, of those art pieces around and about as you glimpse them. Uh, oh, and so in honor of this, I'm also using my Starbucks New Mexico mug today, which shows the um, Taos Pueblo. So there's another connection to Nori, little balloon on the back, lipstick smudge for verisimilitude. So, um, here we are. Let's see. It was a pretty laid back weekend for me. I was going to go out and have drinks with Megan Mulry, but then she was feeling sick and it was, it ended up being very low key. Got the house clean. That was exciting. Um, for those of you who listened on Friday, um, <laughs> I'm going to get emotional. Sorry. Surprisingly emotional. Um, so I talked a lot about how it's hard to ask authors you admire to read your stuff. But I um, screwed up my courage and messaged uh, this famous author who we will call, what shall we call her? We will call her Mary. Uh, and I've messaged Mary before. Um, I think I mentioned that we are um, friendly, if not friends. And so, I mean, David was bugging me. He was like, what can it hurt to ask her to read Dark Wizard? And my other friend, Jane, <laughs> uh, my other friend, Jane, who is much closer with her, said, you know, just ask her. It won't hurt her to ask. Tell her I said to ask. And so, so I messaged, I messaged Mary and I said, you know, I hesitate to ask. I know it's a big ask. 
Um, and she wasn't horribly mean about it, <laughs> but she did say no. And she said that Jane should never have volunteered her, not knowing everything that's on Mary's plate. And yeah, it sucked. It sucked people for no good reason, right? <clears throat> Excuse me while I cry into my coffee. <laughs> I don't know why it bothers me, but I wanted to share that with you because sometimes that happens, right? So it's okay, mom, really. <laughs> I should erase this and start over, but I won't. Um, so anyway, I, I'm probably going to ask a few other people if they will give it a shout out and lots of, of you have already given it a shout out. So it, it doesn't matter. Um, but one thing that I will say is that this author, Mary has, has been unkind to other authors. Uh, in a similar way. I mean, she's maybe just a brusque person. And uh, when I told David, who had been really encouraging me and saying, well, you know, you should just ask her. Uh, you know, worst that can happen is she'll say no. Uh, but it's not true. The worst that can happen is that you and you come away feeling a little less than. Um, but when I told David that, you know, that she did say no. And, and then I had to warn Jane that, uh, I, that I had inadvertently gotten her in trouble. So she had to hasten to, uh, say something. I did explain, I did explain after, which I thought I'd made it clear, but I said, you know, that Jane did not volunteer her, um, that she just encouraged me to ask. Um, but, you know, David said, well, I'm just surprised that someone wouldn't want to, to help, you know, wouldn't want to use their platform. And the thing is, is that Mary does, Mary does help a lot of authors. So, you know, maybe it's me. It's probably me. Uh, I did a blog post yesterday on professional jealousy and how that works. So I'm getting a lot of brightness here. I should probably try to adjust the angle a little bit. I was trying to fix it so that it's not quite so <clears throat> from the glare in the window. There, that's a little better. Um, you know that people deal with it in different ways and, uh, and let me be clear, Mary has no reason to be jealous of, of moi. <laughs> um, but you know, sometimes the, the relationships can be weird. Sometimes they can be a little fraught. Um, so, so that's where we are. Um, I just wanted to touch back on that. Tell you all of my, uh, that it did not go well. So, um, although it didn't go that badly either. So I, I now at this point is when I attempt to climb back on my pillow and regain a little bit of equilibrium and decide that doesn't matter so much. But I think I will start putting up some snippets of Dark Wizard uh, on Facebook and stuff this week for you guys to read. And there we are there. Um, I'm having a lot of fun writing Sorceress Queen and the Pirate Rogue. Uh, Jack is definitely, um, he's a good character for me to be writing right now. He is the, uh, the wonderful antidote to, to all of this, uh, to all of this being Jack is not easily daunted. I need to be less easily daunted. I think sometimes.
but yeah, I'm like past 33,000 words on that book. So it's screaming along. I need to do first past pages on the promised queen. Those are due March 2nd week from tomorrow. And I haven't touched them yet. Part of my problem is, is that, and this is like due to COVID, right? Is that they are on PDF and always in the past, they have sent me paper proofs and but I, they, I, they didn't even offer this time. Oh, was not an option. I think because they don't have access to their printers and so forth. So, so it leaves me in a bit of a conundrum. Um, I'm trying to spend less time on the computer. I don't want to read that whole book on the computer, on the laptop. I also don't really want to print it out. And the, here I'm being a hypocrite. What does it matter if it's my paper or their paper? It's, you know, an expense, but it's not a huge expense. Um, it just feels like such a waste, but it's a waste whether they print it or I print it. Right. So I need to, um, make a decision there, which, um, so far is not that decision energy has not presented itself to me. Um, I kind of had the idea I would spend the weekend reading it and I didn't. And I think that, um, future Jeffy is not going to feel any different. Um, future Jeffy of five days from now is not going to feel differently. So I am going to have to get a grip. I, I might just print it out. Um, yeah. Cause I, I know I don't want to read that whole thing on the computer. That probably means I need to get more, uh, paper. But then at least it'll be preserved for posterity. I can send it down to um, my author archive down in Texas. And since I do have one. Uh, as far as technology, uh, thank you for the feedback. Uh, those of you who have commented, I think I am obviously just doing it this way. I'm going to do it through Zencaster with the video and the audio together upload to Buzzsprout and to YouTube um, and probably just not bother with Instagram. Maybe I will do a little snippet to Instagram. Maybe that's, that's what I should do. I'll do a snippet to Instagram and then point you all to the, um, the YouTube video or the Buzzsprout. Um, it's not ideal, but yeah, trying to keep it under 15 minutes sometimes works, but sometimes I do feel like I'm cutting myself off. Uh, I have been encouraged. Uh, Grace had suggested to me like a year ago, I was trying to make these a little bit shorter because she said it was like the, the attention span of the person, you know, that like 15 minutes is the max, but 15 minutes goes pretty fast. Uh, unless I'm really like totally brain empty and have nothing to say. We have to allow for the time for me to cry into my coffee, people. I, mean, <laughs> I shouldn't say that because then it makes me weepy again. Do you guys do that? Where like if you talk about crying or if you, you know, it's like you can maintain just fine until somebody asks you if you're okay. And then you go, no. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I didn't, it's hard for me to decide exactly why that's painful and I need to stop talking about it or I'm going to keep crying. Ugh. It's a truth though, that as much as we attempt to be, I don't know, step away from, from our work, to say that what, what I create is not me. It's good advice. I've given you guys that advice to create that division. Ultimately, it's very difficult to separate ourselves from our creations. And it might be the wise and logical, mature, I, I, I almost want to say manly, you know, to, to step aside and say, well, doesn't matter to me, but 
and I, I agree with people who say that, who find it problematic when we talk about our books being our babies. You know, they're like, no, it's not a baby. It's, it, it's something that you made. It's something that you created. It's not you. It's not a human being that you grew inside your body. Although we do kind of grow our books inside our bodies, but I don't know. Maybe if there's not that strong emotional connection to the work, to that strong belief in and love of the work, then maybe it doesn't have the life that we would like it to have. And so <clears throat> overall, overall, I think it's, it's important to, to acknowledge ourselves as, as emotional creatures, that it's okay to, to feel sad about something. And I think I've spent, <clears throat> this is just a weepy episode, you guys. I'm sorry. I'm really not, not in a bad place. <laughs> um, I think I've, you know, maybe a lot of us do. And, and I want to say, especially women, but you guys can tell me if this is a similar struggle for you you know, that, that we try very hard not to seem emotional because women are criticized, you know, for being emotional. Oh, you know, can't have a woman president because you might start a war. Although my, my favorite comeback to that was, yeah, but, but all the wars so far have been started from, by men, right? It's like, well, yeah, with a few, you know, a couple of exceptions. Yes. <clears throat> so why do we think this? But you know, I know that like going all the way back to grad school and that sort of thing that, or even younger, even younger, you know, that I was, um, I'm one of those people that I, I'm obviously a crier, but when I get frustrated, I cry. Or when I get angry, I cry. And, you know, and I remember being chided by, by men in particular, you know, not to be so emotional. Don't cry. Uh, my graduate advisor um, would really get on me for that, that it's, um, it's, it's perceived as a sign of weakness. You know, maybe that's American society. Maybe that's like male gaze. I don't know, but it's also not good for us to repress our emotions. Uh, you know, that's, I really do believe that, that we end up storing emotions in our bodies and that it creates all sorts of tension and bad disease states. So, so the best advice is to feel the feeling and let it go. You know, don't try to hang on to it. Don't dwell on it. Feel it and let it go. So here I am to, with you all, my confessional, coffee confessional, uh, feeling my feelings and letting them go. So thank you all for listening. Uh, it's, uh, it's a good good um what I, I keep coming back to verisimilitude uh if if we were able to sit and have our cup of coffee together in the morning i would be telling you about be like oh you wouldn't believe what happened to me and then you'd be like okay jeffy stop crying <laughs> no you wouldn't would you so and then we'd say well Today is the day where we order more croissants. <laughs> ah. So, okay, so I apologize for the uh, the weepy podcast, but emotions are okay, right? We keep telling ourselves that. <laughs> Well, I do feel better. And now is when I would say, okay, so tell me about you. How was your weekend? Feel free to let me know. Okay. On that note, if I don't delete this podcast, I will remind you all that first cup of coffee is part of the Frolic Media Podcast Network. You will find more podcasts that you love where people don't cry <laughs> at frolic.media slash podcasts. 
and I will talk to you all tomorrow when I will not spend the whole time being weepy. I promise. Well, I can't promise, but odds are. All right. You all take care. Bye-bye.